brother, I've listened to you. I've been called us of name. Not serious, not weak. He was sincere. I should not present myself again. Because I'm not what you're voting. But I believe that. I completely agree with you that we need new faces. 100%. And that was why I have said it. That Atiku, Pitobi, Tinubu should step aside. And the reason is because the ruling party has failed, the opposition has failed. Uh, we have not yet talked Alex Oti and Peter. We have simply said that the doors of the party are open to others, which is democratic. Hello everybody, Hello, welcome back to Plan B TV News. You know, we make videos recently about Kenneth Okonkwo, how he said that Peter Obi should step aside, how he said all the APC, Tinibu, and uh, Atiku Abubo Aka, all of them should step aside for him for 2020. He didn't say for him, let me not lie. He said they should step aside, that uh, they, are, they are not competent enough to rule Nigeria coming 2027 presidential election. You know, a lot of Nigeria stretch him, drag him, and call him all kinds of name. Now the man is back again to address himself and give his two cents and the reason why he said that Peter Obi is not competent enough and all of that. He decided to come back again and this is what he have to say. We'll be right back. I completely agree with you that we need new faces. 100%. And that was why I have said it. That Atiku, Peter Obi, Tinubu should step aside. And the reason is because the ruling party has failed, the opposition has failed. Are you aware that in the House of Representatives, you have more opposition members as representatives than the ruling class? If they had come together, and that's why I said coming together to form a consolidated fortune before you even begin to talk about measure. I did not say measure is not important. I'm saying you don't just finish an election and the first thing you start talking about is the next election. You consolidate and form alliances amongst yourself to work together as opposition. If all the opposition members in the House of Representatives had come together, they would have produced the speaker and the vice. Now, what you said about subsidy. The three parties agreed subsidy should go. The three parties did not say that subsidy should be irresponsibly, without plans, removed on the first day before a president sets up his cabinet, before a president See, makes any plan for the cushioning effect. A president in the inauguration ground said first subsidy is gone. The opposition parties did not subscribe to that. I came to your studio that same the next day saying we should be careful coming out of oil subsidy that from the way this is done, it is unsustainable and it is still on record. Now, let me tell you something. According to the notable pronouncement of my Lord Gumel, in the case of Sheriff and PDP, he said proper leadership and good governance must, must be devoid, must underline, of whimsical and capricious conduct, of self-serving attitude, of nepotistic and despotic dispositions, but must, as a concomitant bottom line, and as of its hallmark, must consist of selflessness, of sincerity, and of dedication to the service of the overall objective of the government. What is the objective of the government? Security and welfare of the people. This president is in China, in a new presidential jet that is unnecessary, while people are dying for security problems in Sokoto, in Meduguri, and then you're saying that is what should be done? No. This government is nepotistic and despotic. It is very self-centered and egocentric. All about itself. Well, you can see the Senate president made it clear that let the people that are protesting against hunger and hardship, let them continue while they will remain feasting. Why wouldn't they be feasting? It cost Nigeria about 805 million naira to maintain one member of the National Assembly while they are promising 840,000 Naira a year for the worker that is actually the productive capacity of the nation. So what I'm saying is that please don't compare whatsoever the opposition, what they would have done if they are there, with what the ruling party is doing. 
But I agree with you that the opposition leaders have not been able to show leadership to inspire their members to make sure that this perfidy that is happening to our electoral process and our judicial process are corrected. Because if all the members of the opposition parties in the National Assembly have maintained their stand, APC wouldn't, for instance, elect members into INEC who are card-carrying members of APC. You saw the two of them that we are elected in. They wouldn't be going away with having presidential jet when people are dying because these things must come by appropriation. So I agree with you that the opposition leaders, it is only when they consolidate and take on the ruling party that the people will begin to have confidence in them and then they will be talking about merger. Now, the only thing they are thinking about is election rather than thinking about the welfare of the people. That is why I say all of them have failed. Well, let me make it clear that as long as politics is concerned, the secret of acquiring political power is cohesion amongst your own group and collaboration with others. So coming together will always be an unbeatable denominator in a democratic process of acquiring power. However, I sincerely agree that the opposition is failing because they are concentrating on acquiring power from a ruling party rather than immediately after the election concentrating on consolidating their platforms and then taking on the ruling party on policies to convince Nigerians that they are the alternative force that should take over. The issue of the opposition trying to take power from a Tinubu will be a tall dream. And the reason is this. Our electoral system and judicial system have been overthrown. As long as the electoral process is concerned, here are my reasons. I was a member of the presidential team, and I can tell you unequivocally that our electoral jurisprudence has been destroyed. And the courts did this by giving INEC discretion to do whatever they like. The courts say INEC has discretion on whether to transmit electronically or not. This is not what the law says. Let me make it clear in my own opinion. So power does not proceed any longer from the will of the people in Nigeria, but from the discretion of INEC and from the desecration of the judiciary. And having that as bottom line, the opposition, they are just wasting their time. What Lamido said is true. Because a Tinubu outside government was able to overwhelm the system. What about a Tinubu inside government? Now, let me tell you why I say our electoral jurisprudence has been overthrown. The court said, if you do not bring your petition, if you do not bring all your witness statement on oath, if you don't bring all your evidence within 21 days, your case is dead. Respectfully, again, that's not what the law says. The law says in section 285, subsection 5, petitions should be presented within 21 days. According to Rule 4, section, subsection 1D, petition simply means the facts that you need to prove, the grounds and the relief sought. It is not the evidence. In Rule 5, the rule for procedure for election said evidence need not be stated in the petition, but the court may give order that you should provide further particulars to prevent surprise and avoid unnecessary expense and to ensure fair and proper hearing of the suit. Meaning, the court, by subpoena, can allow subpoena witnesses to give evidence after 21 days because that's the only way that you will avoid unnecessary expense to the petitioner and ensure fair hearing. Why? An adverse witness will never voluntarily give you evidence that you will use against it. Now, you know, the reason he's saying all of this is because he said Peter Obi is not taking a drastic actions on how Aburi, that of the Labour Party chairman, how he's running the affair of the Labour Party, 
maybe Peter B wanted peace, but he said Peter B should be a dictatorship and uh, they should do that and that. So after her collective information and her collective ideas, and Peter B and the Labour Party uh, uh, Council decided to sack Aburi. They said Aburi is no longer the chairman or active or any chairman of the Labour Party because he have been causing chaos and they uh, taking information from this party and to the other party. And I want you guys to watch the video. We'll be right back. Honorable members, labor leaders, let me very respectfully stand on all the and this simple box. The Excellency, I have to start by thanking you for that very, very detailed elucidation of our position so that people know. And I thank various speakers including St. Oneda. He told you that after going to Heineke, he came to the first place. And I said to him, brother, I'm listening to you. But I'm also consulting. And I thank you. The governor said it. To consult it. To discuss. And I thank him because I know what he has gone through before we arrived at this stage. It is not as if we just woke up and called the meeting and say, come here, you know my own position as well. I've been called out of name. Not serious, not weak. He will say, I should not present myself again. Because I'm not what you're voting. But I believe that we have to follow the process. And the governor each time I come to him and say, please do this, please do this, please. And he did that. And when he says he goes through the law, or he does what is right, I believe him. Because I know he consulted and everything. So, we're not here, like he said, all we're doing here is to continue the exercise of building. We're not here to dissolve, we're not here to suspend or sack anybody. And like I always say, even if this new one we are doing, whatever we're going to do in the future, everybody, including those who are not we are part of yesterday, can participate. Everybody is free. We don't ask anybody. We just want to do it properly. So if you are if you are chairman in the state, you want to contest the game, who we'll vote for you or vote against you, whichever one. Nobody, we are not saying you are no longer qualified. It's just simple. It's just that we have to do it properly. That's what has been stated here. So I thank all of you, all of us that are gathered here. It's not going to be easy. Even after this meeting, we will still continue with meetings, reconciliations, everything. But we need to be on the right path. It is critical. It is better than right part than negotiating. Look at our election man coming up. We should be in the campaigning and telling selling our market, not having meetings of party. And soon all of us, with what our government is doing here, we should be selling our market globally, not waiting and doing this. So we've resolved that we're going to move. And I know let me thank a gubernatorial candidate. I'm sure what you've done is the work that by then we finish. You just put it into your system and we'll conclude. Senior advocate, I think you have started the communicate. All we need is to put the bits and pieces and you conclude. And we'll just read that and go. So don't, re don't remove the communicate. We're just going to give you ingredients you put in different parts and we'll move ahead. And we are sure you will do the right thing. And again, in going forward, I must appeal. In going forward, let everybody listen to this sacrifice. When we talk about the dear governor mentioned it about the issue of caretaker or issue of this. Let's we're just trying to set up just a small committee that will have to do the what we want, the right thing. 
which will lead us to a period of maybe 19, 120 days. We want everything we are going to do to end as quickly as possible so that we'll be able to know what we're doing. So we're not, going, we're not trying to set up another leadership. No, we're not trying to do this. It's just a system that will help to get to where we're going. That's what we want to do. Not another group that can become a problem for everybody, but a group that will solve the problem. And we want everybody to embrace this. That's what we want to do. So for us, having the near LLC, our parents, I love that. What Mama, I like what you said. What you said was very good. Mothers, parents must go from time to time to tell their children that they are doing well or not. I used to tell people that I had a principal. I had a principal who, for a time ago, who did not realize as a governor. So whenever I go to see him as governor, he hold my ear and said, I want you to listen to what I'm telling you now. I said, no, father, I'm a governor now. He said, listen to what I'm telling you. What I feel like that, no, he said, you know. So he's sitting down, I said, okay. So I bend down in his old age. As far as I would, he still hold my ear and be warning me. Hey, you may feel the to I may feel the to I can. But that's because you never grow old where your parents are. So I really thank you for God allowing us to grow old. And remember, we are not trying to do the wrong thing. We are, like you said, we are trying to follow the law and do the right thing. And I will plead to everybody who is listening to us and those who are here, those who are not here, we want everybody to come together. We want it to work. That is why we're doing this. And I thank all of you who are gathered here. We're going to do one simple thing. We have said we're going to set up a caretaker committee to be able to go into resolving this. And we're just going to do a, a 29 member committee. The reason is that the work is huge. We're talking about the whole federation. We're not going to do like Dr. Sadiq to message. We don't want to say we are doing something in, in Kogi, uh, we're not doing it in Kuala. No. We want to publicize that this party today is the third biggest party in Nigeria. <laughs> and I can tell you have the brightest future of all the parties. Nigeria. If we do the right thing, the other ones, people know them. We are the only people who are trying to offer something different. But we must manage it. So we have carefully selected this team, which will encompass our, the names, you will see it. Just like we were invited, pop, precisely published in the media and everything. We were going to say how carefully this representative so that everybody will be accommodated. We have selected, of course, NLC, three members to be part of this. Similarly, with three UC to be members of this. Senators, we have three senators to be part of it. House of Rep, four members. House of Assembly, we have about same number, three members. We have to have a representative from the Northeast, Northwest, North Central, Southwest. Four candidates for the Google Tedal, former governors, as a material candidate. That is how this committee, like I say, 29 committee, which, as you know, caretaker does not have positions. 
We are only going to have chairman and secretary. The rest are people to coordinate. Remember, they have just work to do within a very short time. And we ensure we will ensure that everything is done properly. And this committee will be chaired by Senator Nenadi Usman. <laughs> and we will, the secretary will be Senator Darlington Okocha. That is what we want. I know that some of the people who are here will be surprised, especially Nenadi. But we wanted somebody who is neutral, woman, so you'll be kind to everybody. You know, woman for everybody. So we don't want more quarrel. We just want somebody. All we are saying is let things work. And we are pleased. I must guys continue to say we will continue to engage, side, move on, but we will get things right and show an example of what things are supposed to be. That is what we are here. We are not here for any other thing other than how, what do we do to be able to move forward. Governor have told you I went to INEC. Students have told you I went to INEC. And we have also seen what is happening to us. I think we are all in agreement. Yeah. Thank you and God bless you. you. Alright, I believe at this point, so uh, Kenneth Okoko will be happy. Maybe he will rephrase himself because I, I think he's, he was on his way out of Labour Party. Maybe at this point, he might find a reason to come back and say, okay, I'm now back to Labour Party. What I said about Peter will be, I'm sorry, Peter will be is that, Peter will be is good, Peter will be only he, Peter will be holy, ha, la, 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 la. anyway, I'm going to be ending the video here. I don't want it to be too long. I love you guys. Remember, God love you. I want you guys to comment your thoughts. What do you think about what Kenneth Okoko said? What do you also think about the action of the Peter Obi and the Labour Party on how they, they sack Aburi? What's your thought about Aburi? Do you think Aburi was a good uh, party chairman? Do you think he was a weaver in the beans in that party, causing chaos? And what are, what are your thoughts? Please comment it in the comment section. All right, until we meet again, please don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys. Without you, there is no plan B TV. Your subscription have pushed me to this point because when I watch the subscription growing and the video growing, it gives me more zeal to quickly make another video. You guys will continue to show me this love. God bless you. If I have power, I would just say whatever. Let me just pray. Whatever you desire good from God, may God grant it to you. And whatever it is, is it finance, is it child, is it money, is it job, is it health? Whatever it is, may God grant it to you in an easy way. But anything you are planning evil against any other person, no matter what that person do to you, God not will grant them. But all your good heart desire, may God grant it to you in an easy way. All, all right, until we meet again. I love you guys. Peace out. Uh, we have not yet talked Alex Oti and Peter. We have simply said that the doors of the party are open to others, which is democratic. If you look at section 221 and section 222 of the 1999 constitution, it makes it clear that every political party is open to all Nigerians. The Labour Party constitution is equally clear that you cannot deprive people who may be interested in running for an elective office in the party. And so what we have done simply is to open the window to accommodate more people. You will agree with me that democracy is about numbers. The more, the merry. The more people we have, the better for the party and for even the candidates themselves. Because if you emerge from a competitive process. It gives you more confidence and it shows that you are the best. And Labour Party have always maintained that why APC and PDP have failed is because they suppress competition and skew their primaries towards one individual. And we feel that since our party is different, we should not be seen in behaving in the same way. And that's why we have simply thrown the party open 
for all our soldiers.